OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network Hi everybody, how are you feeling this afternoon? I will share with you now my presentation and I've just dropped these slides into um, the chat. So please let me know if um, you don't see the slot, if you can't download it. And I'm hoping everybody can see my screen now, yeah? You can use your reactions to give me a thumbs up. Thank you, Carol, I see your thumb. Okay, awesome. So let me get to it. Okay, and I know this is Friday afternoon. You've had the opportunity to see many um, presentations and thank you, I appreciate you for, for coming here to mine today. And so uh, just quickly practice your annotating skills that you've probably learned here at the um, at TDLS, or maybe you've just um, really gotten down good on them. So go ahead and annotate here. I'm going to give you the rights to um, check, circle, and um, do as you like. Uh, here we go. Let's see, uh, yeah, you should have annotation, uh, right? So go ahead, if you can put a stamp mark or a check. Yeah, okay, Carol's all over the hot diggity, yes. So, um, and you've probably been, are gonna be emoji or bitmojied out now. So uh, I'm sorry if um, you're getting a little bit too much from me. I have at least one on every slide. So it's fun. Um, so here we go. And thank you for uh, showing me your feelings today. Uh, yeah, awesome, thank you, Linda. Anybody else want to go ahead and put their stamp mark on here? Karen, thank you. And uh, what's nice about uh, annotating is you can see students' names. Or now I can see your names. You're all teachers. But if you're using this in class, yeah. Thank you, Tom. I see. I feel that way, too. I've been up late uh, working and doing this. So I feel for you. All right. So let's go. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, now, in annotating, if you do, if I don't clear this screen right now by um, clearing it, then it'll then all this will move on to the next slide. So I'm going to clear it, and um, I will also share this with you at the end of the presentation as well. So I have to remember sometimes to select my um, arrow, the select tool. So a little bit about me. I have been an adult ed for 20 years. I am a DLAC graduate of last year, 2020. Um, and or was that in 2019? I have some uh, co-workers with me today. Linda was a former DLAC um, also member. And so I, my memory was 20, 2020, yes. <laughs> okay, so. I do have former teaching experience in community college, um, high school, and elementary school. And so today you're here to learn about how to use online dictionaries. Um, but I wanna give some credit to, oh, I see Tom, you're, you're still able to edit. So yes, thank you for reminding me, I must disable your annotation. <laughs> so uh, thank you. and. I'm hoping you, you guys can see my screen now, yeah? Hopefully with no annotating, everybody is good. Yeah? Branka, am I good? Thank yes, you. I'm sorry. I'm just yeah. so uh, uh, excited about this annotation feature and I'm looking for it, but I think I have it because I'm co-presenter with you. But yes, we see your screen. We Great. see uh, we see uh, why okay. even try a cute bitmoji and, thing. Thanks, and that's just to also to remind you guys, I'm doing this often with my students because we are using so many resources going back and forth from the computer um, to our screens. And so I do like to check in with my students uh, continuously. Can you see my screen? Can you see this? Um, and, and I think that's normal. Yeah. 
So um, anyway, I wanted to uh, give some credit to our hardback dictionaries and just uh, remember back. Um, I remember when we had these in adult ed and I was really disappointed. I love dictionaries, but we only had one maybe for every two students. Uh, the type was tiny. They were old and outdated. Um, so if anybody would like to tell us, do you remember, did you use these a lot in your classroom? Um, you can go ahead and write it in the chat or you can turn on your microphone, please, and share with us um, if you have a, um, many memories of using dictionaries. Yeah, anybody wanna share? And tell us. Okay. I thought we were taught. Uh, we were taught not to let them use dictionary, but right. But yeah. Now it's such a good, important part. I don't think about that anymore. Well, since you mentioned that, um, thank you, uh, Karen. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for reminding me to say that this is not about picture dictionaries online. This is about um, dictionaries that are maybe for your beginning high and above. Um, some of these skills you can use with a, a lower level beginning high, um, beginning low probably, but picture dictionaries are a whole nother um, topic in this. And um, that's a, another presentation that should be done. And I would love to, to see that. So um, yeah, like you said, Karen, I, I did use them in the classroom before and it was difficult. I wanted to have more and uh, uh, better. Ones. Yeah. So um, the here, this is just a few ideas of how we used those paperback dictionaries in the classroom. And I've listed a few here from what I could remember yesterday, because it seems so long ago, maybe a year and a couple of, a year now that we're all online. And it seems like a long time ago. And I couldn't remember. I'm trying to think, how did I use them in the classroom? Uh, so I put a few ideas here. You know, you would list some words from your reading and ask students to look them up, write the words in new sentences. Maybe you'd ask them to identify the parts of speech, verb, noun, adjective, or you'd show students your pronunciation keys and how those work. Um, and that's difficult because how do you show somebody English pronunciation when their language is Russian or something else, right? That was always challenging. And then maybe you would give vocabulary tests after they'd practiced and um, knew thoroughly these words at the end of a week or something. Does anybody ha have other ideas that they would uh, use those classroom uh, hardback dictionaries you, you wanna share with us? So feel free to raise your hand or um, use, your, use your microphone. Everybody's muted, so you have to unmute. Ah, I see somebody wrote uh, finding synonyms and antonyms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Thank you, uh, Victoria. Yes. And uh, yeah, Tom, you, uh, you love dictionaries just as much as I do. I think a lot of teachers love dictionaries. We're, we are teachers, um, you know, and so we love books. And I think everybody loves dictionaries. So I hope that you'll be able to take something back with you after today. Ah, ABC order. Yeah. Teach ABC order. Yes. Uh, word searches and Scrabble, and yes, and I learned on um, one online dictionary that there are some um, parts of the dictionary where you can cheat <laughs> for um, word searches or uh, even one for crosswords, a cheat, a cheat tab for crosswords. Yes, using examples, yes, sentence examples, and I have that too here, and I'm going to share that with you. I have an example of that. All right, so the good news is um, paperbacks we don't have right now with our students and they may not have one at home, but they're online and there's a deluge of them. <laughs> if you look online, you just do a, a search with uh, online dictionaries and um, yeah, they are there. So, um, okay. Um, so the, the last one is one I wanna share with you. You probably know all of these. So um, go ahead and give me a thumbs up if you know Merriam-Webster's Learner's Dictionary. Can you use your reaction? Thumbs up, anybody? Okay. Yeah, everybody's, uh, a lot of people are familiar with it. Okay, good. Um, thumbs up, does anybody know 
Okay, so put your thumb down. <laughs> okay, thank you. How about um, uh, dictionary.com? That's one of my favorite. Anybody familiar with that one? Okay, and then I was so motivated today uh, um, at a uh, Christy Reyes' uh, presentation that she had all these awesome resources. I said, oh, does she sleep? <laughs> and so I did a, a search for online slang because I knew something had to be out there and I found it. And so I added it today for this presentation and I hope you like it. Has anybody heard of online slang yet? No? Well, great. I'm going to share that with you and uh, we'll be the first ones to use them in our classrooms. <laughs> okay. Any questions up to this point? I also anybody? like Miriam Webster. Oh, Miriam Webster's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just the plain Merriam-Webster's, not the learner's dictionary. Is that is that what you mean? Yes, because we had the Merriam-Webster's representative came to Katisal and made it mm -hmm. sound so useful. And they are very similar. If you take that learner's dictionary out, it's a nice transition for your uh, ESL learners to then go into the regular one. Yeah, so they are very similar um, platforms. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that they'll have that familiarity. Okay. So um, what's nice about being on Zoom is you have that captive audience. So if you love using dictionaries, it's awesome that you can share your screen and all eyes are on what you're doing. Whereas before you were in the classroom and you had to walk around and point, point it out in the books, right? right? You didn't have that um, flexibility to just focus on uh, one page or a word. So uh, with a captive audience, uh, here are some ideas of how you could use online, uh, your student presentations that you know, do teams or solo. Uh, they could subscribe to the word of the day and uh, dictionary.com has that. And uh, teaching moments. And I'll share a story about that um, where I use the, the dictionary in class with the students uh, writing and it taught me a lot, yeah. And grammar activity too, and I'll show you that. I have an example. So uh, anybody else wanna give us any examples? Write in the chat or tell us if you use the dictionary online right now and how you use it with your students. Would anybody like to share? Okay, let's go to the next slide because this is a lot here. So um, if you need to stretch, get up and do a yoga pose. <laughs> I must say I'm having lots of fun with these emojis. Um, last night, I finally learned to put the Bitmoji extension on my web browser. And I guess you can say I went um, uh, bonkers and I have an emoji on almost every single page. Let's see if you can identify later which page or slide I do not use an emoji. There is one. Okay, so um, remember to model using the dictionary. And that's one reason why I love being at home and uh, being able to show the screen. I mean, there are pros and cons to teaching online and teaching at home on Zoom. And one of them is how the nice flexibility that you can um, use um, Zoom to model how you use the dictionary. And I have examples of that coming up. Okay. So if anybody wants to share how they uh, model using the dictionary, we'd love to, I'd love to hear about that. And if not now, later, I have a link for a Wakelet um, resource where you can drop your ideas too. So um, some ideas for using online dictionaries on Zoom. Use Google Chrome, model and show your students how um, they can find a word with Google Chrome. You can teach them word, word search and how to ascertain a good source for a dictionary. Uh, and here's an example. Uh, the other day in my class, one of my students was asked, uh, said the word met for a past tense word. And so I used that opportunity to show them um, to go straight to the web, like I am here, and to write at the end of the word definition. When you do that, um, then you have all of these um, options that pop up. 
there's that Merriam-Webster's is probably the number one that everybody goes to. And so you'll see dictionary.com. I went to this one here, yourdictionary.com, and it looks really good, but there's just so many advertisements on there that it was really um, very easy for our students or you or and me to lose our focus because so much was going past. Uh, so Collins Dictionary, I hadn't seen that before. Dictionary Cambridge, Macmillan, so many. Free Dictionary, oh my gosh, it just goes on and on. And um, you can teach your students that, you know, the first ones are probably, you know, better ones to go to. So that's an example of showing them the search, how, how, to, um, how to do that. Yeah. Let me go back here. Okay. And um, any questions? Oh. Uh, Bronca says she loves that feature. <laughs> I saved it. Moshe says, images. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you don't have to save them on your computer. You've got to put that extension, the Bitmoji extension. It saves them for you. And if we have time at the end of this presentation, I'll show you what I learned last night. Okay. Okay. So um, if, it, if you'd like to type any messages or um, in the chat, that would be great. And uh, just to gauge where I'm at right now with you guys, are you still with me? You can give me a hand clap to say you're you're still there. <laughs> All right. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. I want to keep you guys awake, and I promise I will try and make this short and sweet because one of my favorite presenters is also presenting now, and I'm hoping to see her too, at least for a few minutes later. All right. So here's an an activity that I have that I've recently done with my um, students and it was just homework actually on Thursday. And it was from visiting one of our um, presenters that I got the idea as a matter of fact, it was Cynthia Wil um, Wilos Wilowski. I think she gave me the idea. So I went right away Thursday morning in my class and I did this. Uh, so that was great. So here's what I did, let me show you. The book is called Arabian Nights and we are uh, reading it on Burlington in my uh, low B class. And so uh, the idea was there's so many past tense words in that story that I want them to uh, be able to absorb and remember some of these words. So I gave them this activity to focus on those past tense words. And as you can see here, um, some of my students have already added to this. Okay. And uh, it's here on this first one, I put the pronunciation because some, somebody asked about it, yeah. So this is just an activity. They put a meaning or a synonym, and then they write a sentence. Uh, in my instructions, this is, on, this is on my Google Classroom, and as part of my um, instructions, I told them no easy words. I will remove easy words. So <laughs> that's something that you can do too. So, and I told them everybody had to do at least two so, so far I have one student that has participated. Yeah. So um, again, let me know if you have any questions. You can stop me by raising your hand. I'm looking um, to my left here to see if you've got any questions. And uh, Bronca is a, a, a great ho host or co-host and she too is looking in the chat if you have any questions. So there's an idea. This is a, a Google um, doc. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, ways of showing your students how to make do searches. If you just type the word in the search bar, this is a screenshot, um, then all of this information appears and you can do screenshots to teach them what everything is or take them straight to the word. And I have, so this is one way of, for the same, for this word appear, because I typed in the past tense where it appeared. And let's look in the next screen, how I also typed the word in. And um, it also shows that you can teach the students that they can go to the next um, word. They can just click on one of these uh, and also find more information, okay? And here I have a link. Uh, to go to that word appear, because I want to show you uh, something really cool. You can use Google to teach pronunciation here. Appear. And 
they get a picture. I love this. There used to be a web page which showed you the actual picture so of the um, mouth moving. Up here. And then the students can record and practice. Up here. And, and it'll play for them. And it'll give them a, um, a response. And they can, they can also change this to go slow. And they can see. Up here. They can see the word. So that's great. I love that about um, Google. Uh, ha has anybody seen that yet on, on Google search? Have you love to know anybody? Have you seen that yet? No, you haven't? Oh, great. Awesome. I taught you something new today. I'm excited. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so where, great, great. where is Google that does this? Yeah, yeah. Can you believe it? Google, just google.com. Just go to the web browser. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome, isn't it? So that's another part word. of the title in my title, how to use uh, Google uh, and online dictionaries to teach pronunciation. Can you demonstrate another word? Please, please, please. Another word? Yeah. Okay, let's do. Uh, who would like to give me uh, another word? So let's see here. I'm going to go back to um, the original search. So I don't, I don't search how to pronounce, but you can put any word in here. How about notable? Or do you have a word? Sorry. A category. That's one that gets mispronounced a lot. Uh, okay, category. I, I see the number 30th, but let's do category here. Okay, and there's category. It even has the um, symbol, the APA or IPA, American pronunciation, uh, or the international pronunciation. I'm not sure which one it is. Doesn't say it here, but there you go. Category. And then you click on the learn to pronounce. So this is great if you just teach your students how to do this. Category. And then they practice. Category. Mmm. <laughs> and I said cat instead of try to say cat instead of chat. This is, yeah, so it gives them, and then I think here, it tells them, look at this, I love this part, I've got that. It tells them what to do. Bring the back of your tongue to the roof of your mouth to block the air, then release it. Isn't that cool? Yeah, okay. Um, give me a reaction if you think that's cool. Any balloon smiley faces? Can I see something? <laughs> Yay, thank you, Mary. Thank you, Karen, yes, all right. <laughs> Okay, we're on our way here. <laughs> Let me keep going. So that's an example. Okay, and so um, something that you can do too is to learn a new word every day or um, it's a project you can have your students. And earlier I talked about you know, student presentations and so they can present a new word. So if you sh share your screen with your students, I think with higher levels, this is a lot easier they can present a word. They can just go to the internet, show the students how to do it. It's repetition that makes everybody feel comfortable with computers. And so if you give your students the opportunity to do this, make a Loom video, there's an idea, a tutorial for them on how to do it, and they can practice it that way, yeah. So um, dictionary.com, this is the word notable. Um, and I want to take you there. The story that I mentioned earlier about uh, a student that I had in my class. So she did this uh, lovely uh, review, a uh, biography review um, of a, um, an, for, for African American history in uh, February. I sent them to history.com and found a link for eight inventors. And I asked my students to, uh, I gave them an example, of course, one that I did. And I asked them to also write a few words, sentences about an inventor, or they could pick any African-American, uh, you know, in honor of African-American History Month, or Black History Month. So um, as that, for that activity, she did a, a beautiful um, slide. I could share that with you later if we have time. And she had some sentences in there. 
So I was really curious because this is a low B class. And I thought, notable, do you know what that word means? I was like, did you copy that word, right? Um, so while we were in class, I asked her, I said, Nadia, can I share your slide with everybody? And so I did, and it was a teachable moment. And so I took everybody to the um, internet. I opened up her slide. I clicked on that word notable, and I showed everyone how you can go to the internet and find um, other words, synonyms. Go to dictionary.com and thesaurus for a synonym. But she explained to me that um, that was the only word she could find to um, come bring across the same definition that she had in Spanish. Um, and so that's why she used that word. So um, anyway, that was a teaching moment where I was able to uh, and use to ask her, why did you use that word? How, how come that word came up? Um, because you know, at a low level like that, notable, that's a, a hard word. But she'd used Google Translate and found that word. All right, so um, for a homework assignment, yeah, you can have them find the word. And then what I do is they copy the sent a sentence from the um, definition, and I'll show you that in just a minute. And then they write their own sentence using the same definition in that sentence. So here's an example. So for notable, um, there are examples. Here's dictionary.com. And when we go down and also teach them about these ads and how they're, where the X's are, that they're sneaky about them uh, and you can close them. And a way to get around this is by doing control plus on your computer. And it usually takes care of a number of ads but I think the um, ad people have discovered that. And so now sometimes I get this huge ad at the bottom of my screen. But for right now, dictionary.com is, is pretty good with letting us see uh, most of the page. So, so down below it has examples, it has synonyms, antonyms too, what somebody mentioned, synonyms and antonyms, and a quiz, there are quizzes and the origin, I love to look at this sometime with my students uh, just for in interest and to get them interested in uh, researching or looking further into something. Okay, um, so, so here, here we go. They have words that are nearby notable and words related to notable and example sentences. So these are very long. And so that's why I asked them, copy a sentence that you know, a sentence that you like, a sentence that you understand, and then use the same definition to make your own sentence. So I know we don't like to have our students copy, but I think it's one way that they can uh, learn how to write. Because after all, speaking, they are copying what other people are saying by listening, they try to repeat the same words. So why not by writing, try to have them write the same words? Uh -huh. They have them write the same material. Um, okay, and then if they click up here on thesaurus, uh, you can then teach them. Um, so you can then teach them the, um, the sin in the day, but there's a, there's a part here where here and that the most search words are in red and let, let me see if i can make this smaller there's an actual I'm not sure if it's coming up here now uh, sometimes it comes up and it'll show you a whole list of words okay anyway it's there's just a lot here uh, sometimes it's the way you, they show it is not exactly the same yeah uh, but you can see, you know, there's emoji, meaning slang, all of these pop culture, lots of, lots of great stuff. Okay. And um, word of the day we talked about earlier, that's up here. So you can take them to word of the day and they can subscribe uh, to the word of the day. Uh, and I also let them know that word of the day, gosh, grub steak, I've never 
used grub steak before. Has anybody here? Give me a thumbs up, anybody? <laughs> no, you've never heard of it either, right? I often tell them that, um, that it's usually a very odd word like this, but again, they have examples and it takes them down to examples and how it's used, pronunciation, how cool is that? And then you can listen to the word of the day. So this is an idea too for presentations. You want your um, students to do presentations, they can present on a word. Okay, any uh, questions right here? Yeah? Anybody wanna say anything? No? All right, let's go on. This is our next. I, I just wanna say, I'm so excited about that Google feature for pronunciation. I had to share with everybody. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, that's what, that is actually what motivated me to do this uh, presentation, Bronco. I started realizing how much I go to the dictionary for, um, for information and for, for words, how much I go to the um, online dictionaries. I said, gosh, this, this is just a trove, a treasure trove of stuff, right? There's so much. Wait till you see what else I have for you. There's even more. <laughs> I was hoping to end this early. But I'm actually getting excited myself because I love the stuff. <laughs> okay, so, oops, I went back too, a little too fast. So here is one of the videos that I got really excited about. I want to share this with you. Uh, and so you can find videos that have confusing words. And here's one of them. Uh, before we go there, oops, let me go back. I keep doing that because it's my scroll, my scroll. Okay, so. Um, I wrote here at the bottom, read with your students. So with my low level students, they love to read and they, they and it's good practice for them. So you can find a word and have a student read. They just love that. All right, so let me show you this effect versus effect video. It's really pretty cool. You're gonna like this. Okay, and don't forget to quiz yourselves, you quiz yourself links are awesome. So uh, here, here, here's an ad, there's a little X, teach them. There's that little X, okay, here we go. And then I get to make this big once it turns on. So let them know there's always ads, uh, otherwise this stuff wouldn't be free. And <laughs> thankfully this is a free, this is a good little ad, it's quick, no words. So, here we go. so I signed up for this word of the day thing on dictionary.com. Every day I get an email about a different word and you wouldn't believe some of them. Onomastic, milieu, Marvy, Marvy. So I just want to point out here that behind this, um, the writing, the um, translation, you can see that there is um, caption. It's closed caption and the words are big. So that's really nice if you want to share a video in class. Well, all these words have had a big effect on my vocabulary. Or is it effect on my vocabulary? Effect and effect, they sound the same. They have similar ideas of influence. And speaking of F words, they both come from the same root. It's just that one begins with an E and the other with an A. Let's break them down. Most often, effect beginning with an E is a noun and it means a result or consequence. Think cause and effect. For instance, I was hangry. I ate some pizza. Okay, I ate a lot of pizza and I looked at pictures of puppies for like 20 minutes. But the effect, the outcome, was that I felt better. A fact beginning with an A is most commonly a verb that means to act on, to influence, or to produce a change in something. I was hangry, I ate some pizza, and it affected my mood, which means it had an impact on my mood because I felt a whole lot better afterwards. And yeah, the puppy pictures help. Effect brings about an effect. Here's another example, true story. Concerned about distractions and disruptions, my school decided to take away the free Wi-Fi. It had an effect, which means the end result of students paying more attention in class, but it also affected our ability, which means it altered our ability to get work done. 
because we couldn't look up information online. In everyday speech, effect and affect sound the same, though sometimes people emphasize the initial vowel a little more for clarity. It's when we're writing them that we tend to get tripped up and it's in writing them that we need to be careful. We might remember their differences this way. Affect, alter. Effect is the end result. B, the two A's. Affect and alter. And two E's. Effect and end result. Okay, so how'd you guys like that? And of course you can replay it. We're not going to. <laughs> okay. Uh, so yeah, right? Did you did you think you'd find all this great stuff on there? Okay. Uh, I'm going to close that page so that we can get out of there. All right. Um, I love that. There's a lot uh, on online. Yeah. Okay. And you could stop that video. I think it was slow enough. Uh, that you could stop and talk a little bit in between. So if, if you have a few minutes at the end of your classes, go to the dictionary online, show your students what they can discover. Uh, and watching a video like this is fun. Yeah, she was cute. I really liked her. I think she was so cute. Okay. <laughs> now punctuation, I think uh, is something that also, we could um, use online dictionaries to teach our students. That, that's a, a, a real um, mouthful, punctuation, huh? Does anybody have any ideas um, on how you teach punctuation? Can you share with me here or with us, everybody? Thank you, Mary. Um, and uh, Tom, your grub steak, huh? Is that really a steak? Is that what that means? <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> okay. All right, well, um, don't you love this meme? So a good opportunity to show your students that quotes, people do this and, and why and what it means, yeah? So let's take a visit over here to punctuation. This is a really good part too. And I think you might see that I am um, pro or lenient to dictionary.com. Yeah, they do a really nice job. So close those X's if you can. Yeah, and let me make this bigger. Okay, so here you see I, I by increasing my um, zoom, zooming my screen, I, I was able to get rid of some of those, some of those ads. Yeah, so here an opportunity to read, an opportunity to have a student read a sentence, right? And this was really funny because um, I love this example. Let's eat grandma or versus let's eat grandma, okay? And then um, they mentioned that grammar book, Eats, Shoots, and Leaves. Now, who's read this book? Because I have, and it's fantastic. Anybody here? It's a small little book, like this big, and you're gonna love it. It's the easiest, fastest thing to read, but it's so good. I'm gonna type that in the chat here for you guys, because if you haven't read it yet, everybody knows about it. <laughs> A friend, of my husband's from the Peace Corps gave it to us. And um, it was just wonderful. Eats, shoots, and, eats, shoots, and leaves. And um, it's a, got a picture of a panda, but it's all about um, definition and how we use words, language. So it's really, it's really cool. Okay. And yeah. so um, it goes through the period and um, comma, all of these, and if you click on that word that's underlined, it takes you to it to the pronunciation of the word, synonyms, definition. Okay, so it's kind of like going through a um, what a um, a tunnel, a, a maze. Yeah, so going to uh, one of these web pages and explain to your students is like uh, going through a maze, uh, and it's fun, a fun maze. They like definitions, right? So um, can you guys still see my screen here? I'm, I've been jumping around to a couple. If you can't, please let me know. Yeah. Okay, how do you get to the punctuation section of a dictionary at dictionary.com? Uh, punctuation section, ah, oh, okay. So um, I've got this link for you. And do you mean, Mary, punctuation for each word or just this? link for punctuation 
Uh, just this thing, six, what you're showing us right now, uh -huh. if I wanted to just go to dictionary.com, I don't, yeah. I see I, writing I, at the top, but I'm looking for something that says. I think if you just go punctuationdictionary.com, and I'm going to do that with you just now, um, that it might, it'll take you there. So that's what I just did. I typed in punctuationdictionary.com. And can you see on my screen there that it says six common types? Yes. Okay. So uh, you are, I did uh, drop the, um, the slides for this and they are interactive. So you'll be able to click on that link also. So uh, I came back to this also to show you, uh, let's see what else I wanted to show you on this page. Well, uh, that I like that it has a lot of examples, okay? Uh, and simple and accessible examples. I teach low level. How many of you teach low level ESL? Can I see your uh, reaction, a thumb? Or yeah, low level, one, we've got one, two, three, four. Okay, great. And for me, that's a lot of what I have to share with my students. I have to look and make sure it's easy and uh, relatable, accessible to them um, by definition, right? So uh, this looks pretty easy, right? My brother isn't feeling well, semicolon. He's been sick for a week. So pretty, um, uh, accessible. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, so you can sign up too. I like that. They can sign up and it's just, um, yeah. So we, we don't have a whole lot of time and I know it's Friday and you want to get out of here. <laughs> All right. So let me go to the next one. I won't get too excited. <laughs> All right. So Perfect timing. And so let's reflect here and type in the chat if you have any ideas now um, for how to use an online dictionary in class. Um, let's see. Um, okay, Carol, your comment about students needs on keyboarding related to punctuation. No space before a period, but one space after. Yes. And um, yeah, that's that's a tough one. If you've got any ideas or you want to share with me, if you find any resources, I have a link to a Wakelet um, page that I have and a place where you guys can go and put any resources like that in there. And I will keep um, keep that stocked, like my refrigerator. Uh, always keep it with ideas about using dictionaries. So do, um, you can go ahead and type in the chat. And if you don't, I understand that your battery is on low. <laughs> okay. All right, let's move on. So um, the last thing that I want to uh, tell you is that dictionaries do offer uh, a curriculum as a curriculum resource. Okay. And I have with me here a book. I started teaching a conversation class, and this is a dictionary. Look at that dictionary. <laughs> this is a Cambridge Advanced Learners Dictionary. And I was happy to see that at the back of this book, at the back, it had a CD-ROM with some downloadable activities that I could use, okay? But uh, even nicer, in the back are um, ideas for conversation. I didn't think that I could get that uh, in a dictionary, right? So it even has, um, let's see, what's the, it's, it's called Let's Talk Conversation. And it has all these prompts, speaking prompts for my students. So one of them, for example, and it puts them in subjects or topics, uh, conversations at work, opinions, how to speaking up. So it has these prompts that you can um, give your students put them in breakout rooms so they can practice the opinions. Uh, and so that's that's just really nice, a, a curriculum resource at the back of a hardback dictionary. So if you still like dictionaries that are hardback, uh, I recommend that one, Cambridge Advanced Learners Dictionary. And on my Wakelet link that you see down here, I'm gonna take you there now, I have a picture of that dictionary on there. So let's let me open this up and show you 
what it what it is. I just learned about Wakelet, and I love this page. Uh, I haven't learned yet exactly how to do it, but I've been to a few um, webinars, I think they call them, or I think they're just jam sessions for teachers, and they teachers will um, be or will be showcasing their pages. And I've heard some teachers say that they teach from their Wakelet page, and I'm hoping to get there someday. So here is my um, resource that I'm sharing with you and that I've invited you on that link that you can go ahead and add ideas. So here's also my presentation. Okay, and I'm sharing this uh, A Power Mirror Screen app because if you have students like I do that use their phones to come to class and for almost everything, I think like us, they're in denial that um, COVID will be over any day. We'll go back to regular life and back to the classroom. And so I, you know, told them, I'm sorry to inform you, but this is going to be the new norm. You're going to have class online at least one day a week in the fall. So please get a computer. In the meantime, if they're not using a computer, uh, I use this app and um, I love it. I use this app to show things from the telephone. And if we have time and you're interested, I can share that with you. I can switch to my phone mode and show you how I use that. So here are the, the resources that I shared with you today. There's the Cambridge Advanced Learners Dictionary. It is for sale on Amazon. I'm not promoting Amazon and I'm not getting any money for it because I have, wake, I have this on Wakelet, uh, but I've, I've um, borrowed my copy from the Sacramento Public Library. So they do have it. There's a wait, I did wait for it. And um, so if you wanna add anything more to this collection, please feel free. And, um, and that, that's it. Any questions about uh, Wakelet while I'm on here very quickly? Yeah, okay. Oh, phone apps. Yes, yes. So I'll try and show you that phone app. I don't know anything about Wakelet, actually. It's fairly new, at least new to me, uh, but I'm excited about it. I, I think all of, all of these teaching platforms, I think they all have their plus. And eventually we will all find the one that we are comfortable with, our niche. And that's what I'm still looking for my niche, the one that the app, the platform that I'm most comfortable teaching with. And I'm hoping that it's gonna be Wakelet because it seems easy, but I might have to use it with Google Classroom because Wakelet I think is just a place for presenting, presenting information online. Mm -hmm. um, so let's see, I've got uh, two new, uh, I can't, cannot get into Wakelet. Oh, sorry, Tim, uh, let's, uh, let me, let me drop this. Um, okay, so here, if you can see on my screen, um, you can do a, um, with your phone, a camera, you can get on that um, Q&R code reader. And I'll also drop that, uh, I just pasted that link into the chat for everybody. <coughs> you can follow along there. I hope that works. Oh, okay. Uh, to, uh, Tom, is it or Tim? I'm sorry. Uh, <coughs> in. Okay. Um, great. The mobile apps. Yes. Yes. Thank you for mentioning that, Frank. Franca. I have that on my phone. Yes, I do. Uh, also. And a, do a tip word idiom punch of the day and prepare a Jamboard of Google Slide to present it. Mary, that sounds great. Uh huh. Okay, Tom, Tom's gonna use the punctuation. Yeah. <laughs> All right, elements of Google. Oh, I'm so excited. Everybody's getting something out of this. Oh, oh, that's great. You're making my Friday. Yeah. Okay, and put the presentation link in the chat. I shall do that again uh, right now. Mm -hmm. Let me, um, let's see. Let me drop that in there. Me too, I'm kind of like brain dead right now. Let's see if I can just click on this and um, put it in there again for everybody. 
Yeah, I saw I, I'm doing it too here. Oh, I did okay. It. And I oh, got okay. it from Wakelet and I was able to get to Wakelet from the previous link that you put in. Oh, okay. And I just realized now I found, I figured it out. I clicked on file. And so I'm doing this through the file also. So I'm going to my desktop and finding that document also. You know, as much as um, uh, I'd like to admit, I, I like to think that I'm a little techie savvy, <laughs> but once you start presenting, um, it all comes out. <laughs> okay. And you get a lot of practice with your students too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Ruth, so, um, uh, the link that you see before the chat, before your question, that's the link to the to the presentation. If you just want to save it on your Google Drive or download it from Google Drive, but what Marisol is doing right now also, she is uploading a PDF and soon you will see the PDF again of the handout and then you can take it from there and download onto your computer. Okay, and so I just got on here. There it is. Okay, and I'm going to get it in the chat. So I have to actually drop it in the chat. Let's see. Okay. Let's see. Hmm. For some reason. Um, hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Sorry about this, everybody. Thank you for your patience. And let's see if this works now. Earlier it worked. I dropped it in here to Bronco. <laughs> and well, you did it once for everybody at the beginning. So yeah. I actually okay. have it two times for now in my chat. And Okay, the... great. So the chat's not working for me right now, and I don't know why. I will, I will do it too. I will do it again, and I will upload. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, so um, and you can see on my screen, yeah, the um, the Wakelet. Any questions on Wakelet while while I'm here? Yeah, any other questions? Okay, okay, mm -hmm. and I will try at the end also to upload it. The um. And thank you, Branka, for doing that again. I I gave that to Branka at the beginning because I knew this was going to happen. I just had that feeling. All right, uh, let's go. I think that's my that. So that's uh, my last share with you. I I hope you enjoyed this, and um, I just had to put this emoji on the side here that said I would recommend the five stars. Please don't do that if you don't want to. But I just had to share with you that uh, you can have so much fun with Bitmojis. And so um, while I'm here, look up at the top here. Can you see on my screen? Let me get my little flashlight annotate. Um, and you can see my little Bitmoji extension. Can everybody see that? Yeah, that thumbs up. So I'm doing this for Bronca <laughs> and the rest of you. Once you put Bitmoji as an extension on your um, browser like that, it share, it saves. So these are all the ones that I used recently. Okay, and then all the popular ones. And then you can look at the bottom and you can get all the ones uh, that you really like. There's tons of them, yeah? So that's the Bitmoji extension up here at the top of the browser. Um, is, are there any questions right now that I can help anybody with? Uh, Tom is asking, how is Wakelet? Oh, I think Wakelet. Uh, yeah, different from Zoom. Okay, so Wakelet is a uh, page and Zoom is your platform for, for, so you have to open your Zoom, right? I just typed in uh, wakelet.com. You have to open your Zoom and then you have to share your Wakelet like I did on the screen. Okay, bye Mary, thank you for coming. And um, I wasn't waving. I have a question similar. Oh, you have a question. I thought you were waving goodbye. Yeah, <laughs> tell, tell me, Mary. Yeah. So you can probably wave it into how is it like Zoom? And then Tom asked uh, like PowerPoint. And mine is what is the difference and why do you like Wakelet as opposed to Padlet? Because I know you have been a big Padlet fan. The yeah. Padlet. 
And yeah. Then- so um, what I like about Wakelet, and it was pointed out to me the other day when I went to a, a webinar about Wakelet, that in Google Classroom, I have to go back here, in Google Classroom, when you drop documents or files into an um, assignment, uh, it, when you're doing classwork, and you're creating an assignment, and you have to drop your documents in there or copy them in it keeps them in that order. You can't move them around. So when you're in Wakelet, you can move things around. The last mm-hmm. thing that you dropped, if you want that to come at the top of your um, at the top of your stream, you can pull it up and put it right there. And I and I like that. That's one of the features. And like I said, I don't know Wakelet very well yet. I've been discovering it since maybe November, December. Ah, Katisol. I went to a a presentation at Katisol. It was a, um, a, a um, it wasn't a presentation, but it was one of those book posters, poster session, a wakelet, and it was fantastic. And I thought, oh, I got to try this. And so, and that, so that's how I found out about it there. And ever since, I've been looking for it uh, and trying to figure out ways of using it. Yeah. And the other thing is that it's kind of a place where you can put all your resources. Uh, So if we have time, I can show you that. Does anybody else want to see what I mean about Wakelet? I can, we have a few minutes. Yes, uh, we don't end until 2.30. So um, we have plenty of time, yeah. All right, so is there anybody else that would like to to learn a little bit more about Wakelet? Uh Uh-huh. Okay, all right, so this is my Wakelet page. Yeah, okay, great. Let me go back to the home, the home button here. This is when I come into Wakelet, this is what I see. And it it labels them as collections, collections. And um, so for example, here are, um, here's a collection that I have and I can just click on it. And this is in a sense how you could present from it. You can go to it and share things. So this is a picture that I got out of Pinterest. Um, And then a poem that was recited by Robert Frost, Um, a video, okay. A Nearpod um, lesson, okay. A GIF um, to tell my students, yeah, you did it, you know, so you can, it's a, it's like a doc, uh, not a, a docking, D-O-C-K, a docking place or a hub, if you will, of everything that you want to use in a lesson, for example. And I think maybe I like that because I don't have to go to all these different pages or all these different tabs up at the top. I only have this one page place. Videos, my music that I like to open my class up with. Usually I put in instrumental music from YouTube. Um, just while students come in after five, I give it five minutes at five minute point, everybody who's there, I start, but I usually put a, a video and sometimes students, I'll pause the video, we'll annotate, do prepositions, things like that. So um, here's one. This was a screenshot that I got from a music, one of the YouTube videos. And I used that was great for um, prepositions. There's the video, it's a music video that I shared. So it was, this is my holiday collection, right? Um, so then um, I go up back ho- home to the top and this is a collection that I'm starting to, to uh, make. So it's a place where you can collect things and have ideas for the future. Mary, you have another question? Mm-hmm. Nope. Did, is it? Anybody else? Mary, did you have another question? Your hand is still raised, yeah? No? Oh? No. Okay. I I have a question. Um, I, when I had a classroom, I used to have music on all the time when students were coming in or while they were doing a worksheet or something like that. And I have not figured out how to do that. So how do you, how do you play music during oh, your Okay, so it's very time? low. I play it low and I only play it in the first five minutes of class. 
No, I understand that, but but uh, do you just go to oh, Pandora or or? Yeah, I see what you mean. I just go to YouTube, mm -hmm. and that's what Zoom is nice for. So, like for right now, let's let's let me show you. I can uh, open another tab, and I can go to Tim Janis. I love his videos. So I just pull up. Um, here's one, and. I just pull it up uh, and you know um, open the the full zoom and um, I don't know am I answering your question there that face just, uh, that, it's like how do you play music in your class right you just put it on it you a shared screen or something well see when they're in when you're in zoom um, they see the, the grid the same grid that you're seeing now you see you should be able to see a grid where you see the participants and if you have two screens you can move from your grid to that now when your students join class they have a choice i believe to see um, the to see your screen view um speaker screen or um view the other screen am i right bronca maybe Bronca, yes. you're so you're, when you yeah it's just when you're sharing with the way you would share your uh, presentation or a website where you have activities you just share the youtube video you just make sure when you are clicking when you click on share to check share computer audio and then you're playing that okay. yeah and as students are coming in you're just and they all come in and say hi teacher hi how are you yeah and you say, hi, I'm good. Everyone shut up and watch the video. For no, <laughs> good question. No, I say hi, we're just gonna wait a few minutes while, while everybody comes in. So enjoy this lovely video. And I put the volume low and I can hear them still and they can hear me and we talk. So it's a okay. little conversation moment. And how are you teacher? Hi, I'm good, how are you? And we just start to talk back and forth a little bit. Yeah, it works nice. Try it. So you, you can like you can have the music on a different volume than the speaking, like students speaking to each other. Oh, it, it's so let me play let me play for you now. Let's try it now. So okay. We could talk. Yeah. So okay. So you can just still hear everybody see, while the music's in the background. Okay. Uh, Let's see, can you hear the music? We heard it yes. earlier. Yeah. yeah, we can hear it. Because in regular, during regular Zoom, you can't have really two people talking at once. Or two audio input. But I'm still hearing the music as I do. Yeah, so it works like background music. Yeah? Is everybody good with that? Yeah? We can hear yeah, it. I think okay. it's something you could try. Okay, just just checking. That's something that I didn't I didn't think that I could do in my Zoom uh, sessions. Also, I would, music I in the background. I had, I thank you for asking because I had wondered about that. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. There's another. Somebody just shared another site, Bronca, for um, relaxation videos. Okay. Um, and I will definitely go to that one. Um, I learned about this one from Corona Norco adult ed colleagues, ah, yeah. uh, but the, the school district is actually Hesperia. And I think actually Karen Zachary, uh, the administrator of our adult education office at CDE shared it early on in um, this year. Um, and it's all uh, different visual relaxation videos that you could potentially use with your students as well. Right. And I just wanted to add for Mary and Ruth, I learned a bunch of setting features just over the, these past two days as I'm acting as the, as the tech support. So it, you may have to play with your participant options on the back end to make sure that you can share multiple, multiple people can share audio and-, and Okay. The, yeah. Okay, thanks oh. for that hint. Okay, and Tom says that Zoom has a share computer audio only, oh. and so I'm looking at that on the um, on the three dots with the more setting on my my Zoom bar. Uh, share computer video sound only. 
I don't have that sound, that choice now. I have share sound and then optimize for video clip, which I'm told not to do for this presentation. <laughs> so um, I think it depends on the site you're at because I know I've seen that choice too that you're talking about, Tom, that says share video only, or share computer audio only, yeah. All right, and then somebody asked, let's see. Uh, oh yeah, Tom, you asked about what I was going to show about emojis. So did you see where I was um, showing at the top of my toolbar? Let's see if I can make that bigger. Up. I, you know, that's the one thing I don't like is that you can't zoom on your, on your search bar up at the top. I've tried that in the past. That, is there a trick to that, Bronca, to be able to zoom your, your menu bar, or your search bar? I don't know if anybody can see at the top next to this little puzzle piece, there's a little square. And that's what I was sharing about Bitmoji. So but you go to the next step. How did you transfer those images into your PowerPoint? Okay, so if you click on it, this is what I like. Bitmoji will say, right click and choose. <laughs> so I have to click on it, copy the image, and then um, let me open a discussion board and um and then show you a whiteboard here okay. and um let's see okay so here's the whiteboard let me move that over here can everybody see my whiteboard we can see your whiteboard okay great and so now i'm going to um annotate so um so i'm going to use the let's see can i do that on here no so i guess it's not like just me... don't work with all the platforms. So yeah. try just putting open up your Google slide show um, yeah. okay. and put it in there. But you got to share you. again because. OK, um, yeah. yeah. Let me, like um... I know I sometimes try to put it in my Facebook comments. Yes. A bit emoji. It won't let me. But I think it yeah. works really well with Google. So you can just show us how you embedded it in your slideshow. Yes. Yeah, it does. It does really well with Google. So let me. Uh share the screen with you can you so, use it with google classroom so uh you could use it with google classroom but like because i'm not able to like post paste one into the stream or i haven't figured it out but okay i've Sorry. only been using emojis for six hours so <laughs> my screen is a little okay um, can everybody see my, my, my screen now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's gigantic on my screen. <laughs> It'll resize. It'll just take a couple of seconds. It's gigantic. Okay. So, um, let me, um, at, okay. So I, I can't annotate on that. Well, let me annotate uh, on that. So sorry about that. Let me, uh, Stop, let me stop sharing here a second and get my screens back to um, normal for you. And is it okay if I share um, a Facebook group, Bitmoji Craze for Educators? If people yes, I've seen, I've seen those too. Yes, thank you, Bronca. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so all you do is just copy and whatever Google slide or doc you're on, you just paste, you um, right click and paste and, and it happens. Yeah, so let's see. Okay, so. Um, while Bronca does that, I can share my one screen with you. While she's looking for that to share. So here's that bitmoji up at the top and um, just pick one, right click, copy image, uh, and then I can go to my um, slide here. And I have to get out of my, I have to get out of the, out of the present mode here. Mm, and that's what I'm trying to do is go back to that present mode. Because it's for just some reason. Go to the bottom of your screen and click exit, and it'll take you to the draft, I think. Ah, yeah, 
Thank you. See those little bars hide. <laughs> Thank right. you. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> they hide. I, I didn't see that down there. Okay. Happy so, Friday. <laughs> yeah. So I just copied pasted that there for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's it. You just go to that Bitmoji um, extension <laughs> and then copy and paste and you're you're good to go. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, any other questions? Uh, I'm gonna stop sharing. And Bronca, you wanted to share that Facebook page? Um, I already shared the link if oh, anyone's interested in joining. Um, and, okay. and also I think Alisa Tekauchi does uh, an OTN workshop on this, how to use Bitmojis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, really I just taught myself, but in a nutshell, the way to get to know Bitmojis is definitely just go to bitmoji.com. And I'll write that in the chat, bitmoji.com, open an account. And then once you do that, go to your, um, if you can still see my screen, everybody, yes. uh -huh. go up here to your uh, menu bar and um, find where it says extensions. And mm -hmm. it says manage extensions. And then you can add extensions. So this is the Bitmoji extension. And when you find it, you, you can add it. These are all the ones that I have. You click on here, search extensions, and it'll say add. Then I could close it too by pushing this button right here and it'll take it off. I pinned it to my, so that's one thing to know. Uh, if I click on that thing, it'll tell me to pin, there's a little pin here. If you click on that pin, that's how it stays on your uh, menu bar. Is that how? Am I using the right word for that, Bronca? Menu bar up here? I think so, yes. Yeah, so your extension, yeah. Uh, so that's that's how I did that. Uh, and so when you do that, magic happens. It automatically transfers and your Bitmojis are there. <laughs> okay, any questions? Um, any questions right now? Okay, I hope, I'm so glad. I think uh, a, a lot of you have given me so uh, many uh, nice compliments. So thank you. Thank you. And uh, feel free, please, to contact me. And if you can't get into um, to see the uh, PDF on this, feel free to email me or, or you find it on my the wavelet. Mm -hmm. OK, that's it. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Appreciate it. And um, I look forward to seeing you guys around someday.